Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. Why is it considered very nice? Because we have e to the power z which is a complex number, we don't know what it is, we're gonna find out and the result is equal to 1 plus i, a number that we know of, right? Hopefully. So at this point, you're probably thinking, at least some of you are thinking, why don't we just ln both sides, right? Natural log both sides, and then we're done. That easy, right? You think so? Bring the z to the front, ln e is 1, so z equals ln 1 plus i. That's the answer. Uh-oh. What is ln 1 plus i, though? A complex logarithm, right? And guess what? It's multi-valued. So let's approach it more rigorously, just a little bit more rigorously, okay? Well, thanks to Euler, we have a formula and a number. What's the number? Euler's number E, right? It's about 2.7. That's all I know. Is it 2.72 or 71? Something like that. But at least I know it is 2.7 something. And it's just amazing. Euler is amazing. He is, in my opinion, the best. Anyways, um, you can argue if you want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and consider the Argand plane which is the normal coordinate plane, just they wanted to give, them a, give it a fancy name and they just call this IM for imaginary, RE for real, and this is the good old coordinate plane. We're just gonna express complex numbers as vectors or points in the plane, and now one plus I is gonna be something like this. One unit this way and I unit this way, units, I unit, whatever. And then of course we're gonna connect it to the origin and now we're gonna end up with a distance and an angle. Of course, uh, the angle is pi over four because of the lengths. And this is one plus i. Welcome to the complex world. Welcome to Argand plane or Argand diagram, whatever, something. I don't know where the name comes from, but Argand is A-R-G-N-D, the D is pronounced, even though it kind of sounds like silent. Anyways, how do you write a complex number in Euler's form or polar form? The most compact form, it's just amazing. That's why Euler is amazing. Even with this formula, he would be amazing enough. R e to the i theta. This is equivalent to something else, but we're going to talk about that later within the second method. First method, we're going to keep things very simple, okay? So z can be written like this, r is the modulus or the absolute value, theta is the angle, and so on and so forth. In this case, theta is pi over four. So one plus i can be written as, what's the hypotenuse? One, one, root two, right? Multiply by e to the power i times pi over four, because theta is pi over four. You see that? I mean, don't you see theta is pi over four? It's an isosceles right triangle. In general, though, things are a little different. In general, we can write 1 plus i as root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. It can be positive or negative. We're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. That's the period, because if you make a full rotation, you're going to be at the same point. So in other words, we have infinitely many, va infinitely many values for this infinitely many values. In other words, this is multi-valued. That means there are multiple values, but they all represent the same number, one plus i. So when you write it in standard form, there's only one way to write it. Okay, cool, cool. Now here's what we have. Because this is one plus i, and because we have e to the z equals one plus i, we can go ahead and replace 1 plus i with this right here. Root 2 multiplied by, in its more general form, e to the power i pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Now it's ln time. Yay, natural log time. Now you got to remember that ln e to the z equals z and e to the ln z is z. Which one of these do you think we're going to use? We're going to natural log both sides, so we do need the first one. Why did I give you the second one? As a bonus, for free. You don't want it? Okay, give it back. You can always return it. Now, we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides here, and then from here, 
from this, I mean, we get z equals ln root 2 times this, but that's going to turn into a product, I mean, to a sum, and then ln of this is going to be i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. You get the idea? Oh, wow, we got the solution. Yay! Awesome, right? Now, this is the general form, but if you want the particular form, which is usually called the principal value, most of the time that's preferred, because if you wanted to make it a single valued, for example, the square root of 4 is 2 in the real world, in the complex world, 4 has two square roots, but only one of them is called the principal square root. Does that make sense? And sometimes uh, to represent the principal argument, they use a capital A, the ln for they use a capital L, so on and so forth. I'm not sure if they are universal signs or symbols, but I've seen people using them. I don't really care too much about those details, but I think that's something you should be careful about if you're taking complex analysis. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, but I made a bunch of videos on basics of complex numbers. And if you also like algebra, number theory, maybe a little bit of trigonometry and geometry, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Okay? All right, after this quick commercial break, let's go back to the solution. Now, I want to get this principal value, so why don't we just replace n with zero? That gives us a simpler or simple looking equation, which is something like this. Yay, we got the solution, and that kind of looks simple enough, right? So that should be the principal value. Now, do you think this is gonna satisfy the equation? You can test it out. Do e to the z, and you're gonna see, hopefully, what I see. Now, let's go ahead and talk about an alternative approach because I think it's fun. Second approach is very different. It's a different approach, okay? So it's not always like that, so this time you're lucky. We have to solve e to the z equals one plus i. Why don't we set z equals a plus b i? For two reasons. One, it solves the problem. Two, it's the name of this channel, so you don't forget. What's the name of this channel? A plus B I. It's not written like that because you can't use a plus sign. I realized I was trying to pick a name for my channel and what else could be more appropriate, I thought. And I'm like, A plus B I seems like a good way. And can I get A plus B I? YouTube says, no, you can't use a plus sign. They are forbidden. So I had to go with A plus B I. Makes sense, but it's still plus. It's just longer. <laughs> now, anyways. What happens if I replace z with a plus b i? A miracle occurs. You, you want to see that? e to the power a plus b i equals 1 plus i. And here's where the hocus pocus mathematic comes in. We're going to separate e to the a a times e to the b i. And this is still going to be 1 plus i. And now, here's where Euler comes in. Knock, knock. Euler is coming. And Euler's formula is e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Beautiful, isn't it? This is just amazing and mind-blowing. Replace theta with pi over 2, pi, you're going to find amazing identities, which are beautiful, beautiful, and beautiful. Okay, now, we're going to go ahead and replace this with what? Theta is now replaced with b, so e to the power ib becomes cosine b plus i sine b, so we get e to the a multiplied by cosine b plus i sine b, and that's equal to 1 plus i. And now we're going to go ahead and distribute e to the a cosine b plus i times e to the a sine b equals 1 plus i. 1 plus i means 1 plus 1 i, by the way. So this is 1, and this is 1. Hmm, that's interesting, right? Now we get a system of equations. How beautiful is that? e to the a sine b is equal to 1 e to the a cosine b is equal to 1, which means they're equal. Or you can divide them like this. e to the a is going to cancel out. You get tangent b equals 1. This means two things if you're thinking about between 0 and 2 pi. Either theta is, or b I mean, is pi over 4, or b is uh, pi plus pi over 4, which is 5 pi over 4. Because in the third quadrant, remember, tangent is positive, right? And tangent is found by the tangent line, by the way, in the trig unit circle thing, right? Okay, now, where do we go from here? Which one is appropriate? Or are they both solutions? No. You have to be careful because e to the a is always positive, so sine b must be positive. Because from here, sine b is 
1 over e to the a or e to the negative a, therefore it's positive. Cosine b is also positive for the same reason, therefore we have to stick to the first quadrant, ta-da! So we have to go with b equals pi over 4. If you plug it in, z, what is a? Well, e to the a sine b is 1. If b is pi over 4, sine b is 1 over root 2. So e to the a is root 2. If you ln both sides, you get a equals ln root 2. So since z is equal to a plus bi, a is ln root 2 and b is, I forgot what it is, pi over 4. It's just an angle. So that's the natural log of a complex number. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.